Hello, Nick. How are you? Good to see you again. Thank you, Lynn. How are you? Very well. Um, and thank you for joining us um, at home uh, for a talk on kindness. So, talking about kindness, Nick, what exactly do you mean by kindness? Um, in, when, when we talk about kindness, we, we, we're talking about relationships. In other words, I guess um, life can be quite harsh toward, our, toward ourselves. Um, but we're all born into pain and then um, until we develop some calluses and um, our digestion settles down, we, we learn new things and we stuff them up in the beginning. We um, sort of lose a lot of things. We lose our youth, we all lose our loved ones and um, at some stage we sort of lose our functioning and we, we die. Um, it, it can be quite a difficult world for all of us and the question is not whether or not difficult things happen to us but how we relate to those things becomes important how we relate to others in this world how others relate to us and how we relate to ourselves is very important and I guess if we talk, we're talking about kindness is, is um, um, to stay away from fancy definitions um, it's not being harsh on oneself when things stuff up Okay. okay. So, so how can kindness help to, uh, through this life of harsh reality? <laughs> yeah, um, it, we we do see a, a lot of kindness m mentioned in self help books, and I guess it sometimes can be confusing. Why? How does ki kindness help us um, develop ourselves, or how does it help personal development? And um, I'll invite you to consider an example. At some stage, all of us as babies pulled ourselves up on furniture and, and made those couple of first steps. And then we fell on our bones. And a very interesting thing happened after that. Even though we knew we were likely to fail again and again and again, we pulled ourselves up on furniture again and we tried to make those steps again. Now, had we been treated unkindly during that time, had that, there been some, some sort of harsh punishment for having not succeeded at, at walking immediately, mm. we would be highly unlikely to try to, to walk again. Because chances are we'd fall again and there'd be that harsh treatment again. And this is why, I guess, in, in our lives, when, when we look at learning anything new or undertaking a project where, which may be um, sort of risky or difficult, it is likely that we'll stuff up. It is likely there will be things that are outside of our control. And it is likely that we will have to step outside of our comfort zone. If I don't treat myself kindly, then it might be way too scary for me. Mm -hmm. That possibility of failure. So that might, might hold me back from ever achieving fulfillment or personal development because, fear, because of fear of being treated unkindly by myself or others or the world. Okay, so how do I learn to treat myself kindly? <clears throat> so specifically, I guess <clears throat> a very important thing to remember here is um, all sorts of thoughts will show up and some of those thoughts may very well be unkind. I strongly encourage those who are trying to achieve kindness not to try to stop those thoughts or argue with those thoughts or, or, or distract ourselves necessarily from those thoughts. Um, just because the thought is unkind doesn't mean much. And our minds work truly in mysterious ways sometimes. And the vast majority of the process, psychological processes that take place, take place outside of our awareness. It's very difficult, therefore, to control them or, or, or to affect them. Um, what I would recommend is notice some events or some situations where you feel you could benefit from a more kind treatment. Notice what a kind person would do in this place. Try to imagine what, how would a kind person act or what would they say and then try to imitate that. <laughs> Humans are excellent learners and I guess doing something once, twice, three times um, uh, goes a very long way. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, if someone gave me an address somewhere far away in um, a suburb here in Brisbane that I don't know, chances are I will have to have a map to get there or a GPS and chances are I have to stop a couple of times and ask people for direction, directions or read names of streets of where I'm at and then um, eventually I'd make it there. Chances are second time that I'm traveling in that direction it will be easier. The third time even easier. And if I travel there day after day, 
for a couple of months, it will become second nature. Mm. Our neural pathways, I guess our nervous system, is far more complex than the roads here in Brisbane. And for a signal to travel from A to B, it's actually not a straightforward matter. It's not that easy. And that's why, for the first time, when we do anything, it's a bit clunky, a bit awkward and unusual. Mm. Um, we do it again and again, though. The signal finds the short, shortest possible pathway. And every time that signal travels, it strengthens the pathway. So what that means is we are excellent learners. And that ability does not um, uh, continues. It, that ability continues with age, well into um, our advanced age. And a lot of research supports that. And I can keep learning even as long as I get, even when I get older and older. Exactly. Keep trying mm. to act a certain way and you'll get better and better at it. Before you know it, it will become second nature. Okay. Thank you very much, Nick. Good to talk to you again. Good. Anything else you want to tell our viewers? Well. Yes, thank you, Lynn. And, and thank you, um, viewers at home, for joining us. I guess um, if you take one thing out of this whole talk about kindness, um, I would say. Humans are incredible learners. So um, if there's a virtue or a skill that you value, try acting this way once, twice. In other words, fake it till you make it. Practice makes perfect. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. And thank you.